club. It's Craig Biggio at second base, Derek Bell in right field, Jeff Bagwell at first base, Luis Gonzalez in left field, Bill Spires at third base, Richard Hidalgo in center field, Ricky Gutierrez the shortstop, Brad Osmus the catcher, Shane Reynolds the pitcher. He's seven and ten. Right-hander Jason Schmidt is nine and seven. He's coming off a win against the Cubs. He gave up one run in eight innings and won the ball game three to one Friday night. He's Got an ERA of 4.36, Jim. He's a hard-throwing right-hander. He's the guy that got in the Denny Nagel deal last summer with the Braves. 0-1 against the Astros this year. He pitched four innings in that game against Mike Hampton right after the break and gave up four runs in four innings. So Schmidt, who's not pitched well against the Astros, has another chance tonight. He has an outfield of Al Martin in left, Turner Ward in center, Jose Guillen in right. Joe Randa's at third base. Abraham Nunez, the rookie, starts at shortstop. Sean Dunstan was scratched. He was in the original lineup. And because of some lower back stiffness, he was taken out of that lineup. Tony Womack is playing at second, and he had a leg injury last night with Kevin Young at first base. Jason Kendall, the catcher for Schmidt. And Kendall has thrown out 40% this year. Pirates have gone five games without allowing a homer. Bill Hahn will be calling the balls and strikes tonight with Ed Rapuano, Jerry Davis, and Terry Tata joining him on this crew. is three and four against Pittsburgh two and two in Pittsburgh they met right after the all-star break and the Astros won those first two games of the four game series by shutout seven nothing and ten nothing then the Pirates bounce back with a ten inning no hitter winning that one three nothing and taking the finale so they did fight back on that occasion Vigio a 308 hitter has 21 homers and 78 runs batted in the fabulous year for him Taking and it's strike one from Jason Schmidt. Schmidt last year was five and six with Atlanta and Pittsburgh, traded here in the Denny Nagel deal in late August, along with a couple of other promising minor leaguers. But Jason was on the big league scene at that time. Grounder to shortstop, Abraham Nunez. Takes care of the first play, so Nunez with his baptism under fire tonight. Boy, he is young looking, isn't he? <laughs> 21 years of age, Jose Guillen, the right fielder, 21 years of age, the catcher, Kendall, 23. They've got a very young ball club to be in the middle of a pennant race. Derek Bell follows Biggio to the plate. Bell has driven in 65 runs with 14 homers and a 274 batting average. Derek said a couple of long balls against the Pirates this year. So that number two spot, he's at just under 400 this season. Bouncing one to third base. Joe Randa short off. Two outs, and Schmidt has the crowd on his side early. Schmidt's a big kid, just 24 years of age. A hard thrower, 93, 94 miles an hour with the fastball. He said he, the problems he's had when he struggled this year is when he's tried to be a finesse pitcher in the newspaper today. He, he wants to come out, establish his fastball, pitch more like a power pitcher, and challenge the Astros with heaters. Interesting to see uh, how much he challenges Bagwell throughout this game. Bagwell homered off Schmidt last year, and that was in a game when Schmidt was still with the Braves. Jeff set a new club record with his 40th yesterday as 124 runs batted in. That's a club record. No strike one on a good fastball, and Schmidt does have excellent stuff. And that was a challenge. Threw it right through the heart of the plate by Bagging. Bagwell fifth in the league in on base and slugging. He's also scored 102 runs. Pitch is just outside. One ball and one strike. The Astros' magic number is nine. They have a chance to lower it by two if they win tonight, and two more if they win tomorrow night. Magic number is a combination as the count goes to one and two. If Houston wins and Pittsburgh losses now, and when it gets to zero, the Astros clinch the division. Pirates want to make time stop as far as that magic number dropping for Houston. It's two and two to Bagwell. Jeff, a 348 career hitter against Pittsburgh. He's hit a couple of mammoth upper deck home runs in this ballpark. 16 long balls in his career against the Pirates. Three balls and two strikes. Let's see if Schmidt stays true to his word and throws a fastball at the bag here. It would be a great confrontation. Bagwell has one career homer, that one we talked about last year in seven advance against Jason. He 
says when you're a kid playing wiffle ball in the backyard, you dream about a game like this. Here's ball four, and numerous times this year, Bagwell has walked when the first two men have been retired in the first inning. That's been a real pattern this season. Sure has. Schmidt threw him the fastball, but he tried to paint the outside corner with it, just missed outside. Luis Gonzalez has come around lately with some big hits. He has eight homers, 63 runs batted in. His batting average is 259. Getting a chance here with the walk to Bagwell to bat in the first inning. The Astros have had good production out of the guys behind Bagwell lately. Sean Berry had a three run double in yesterday's game. Running game could be a factor, although, as we mentioned, Kendall has really been throwing out runners at a high clip this year 40%. He's gone down. The Astros have stolen just five bases in the seven games against the Pirates. The Pirates have stolen nine against Houston. 0 1 to Gonzalez. Start right there, even though he's a big guy and a power pitcher, he's pretty quick to home plate. Short little leg kick and a quick delivery. Jason's from Kelso, Washington. Turned down a scholarship to the University of Arizona when the Braves signed him after drafting him in the eighth round. Upstairs to Gonzalez. He moves out of there and it's one ball, one strike. That pitch was clocked at 94 on the scoreboard here. Pirates were going for young prospects when they traded Denny Nagel last year, and Schmidt, they hope, will really help make that deal pay off down the road. Bagwell draws the throw. This is the first of a two game series tomorrow. Francisco Cordova who pitched a no hitter combining on a 10 inning no hitter with Ricardo Rincon against the Astros in July opposes 18 game winner Daryl Kyle. Gonzalez fouls it away and it's one and two and then they finish the season with three games in Houston. The Astros are hoping to make those games meaningless. If you go out and clinch this thing as soon as possible, that allows you to set up your playoff rotation, rest some of your position players, get some other guys from that bat. Bagwell's going on one, two. Here's the throw from Kendall. And the tag. They get him. No runs, no hits. Kendall guns down another, and the first inning is over for Houston with a nothing-nothing score. The Astros went down in the first inning with a Bagwell walk, but then a caught stealing. Now the Pirates come up in the last of the first inning, and we'll check their starting lineup as Shane Reynolds gets ready to work. The opener of a road trip for Houston. Gene Lamont goes with this Pirates lineup, brought to you by Southwest Airlines. Tony Womack at second, Turner Ward at center field, Al Martin at left, Kevin Young at first, Joe Randa at third, Jason Kendall the catcher, Jose Guillen in right, Abraham Nunez is the shortstop, and it is Jason Schmidt on the mound. Shane Reynolds is 7 and 10. His ERA has come down a bit to 4.34, Jim. Pitching very well lately. Last time out, beat the Dodgers 10 to 3. Seven innings, no loss, 11 punch outs. 43 walks for the year and 161 innings pitched and on the road this year he's two and seven with a 5.50 ERA. Defensively the Astros go with Luis Gonzalez, Richard Hidalgo and Derek Bell in the outfield. Bill Spires, Ricky Gutierrez, Craig Vigio, Jeff Bagwell, Brad Austin, and Shane Reynolds are the infielders. Bagwell with a lot of assists and the Astros have turned 159 double plays. Keys to the game are brought to you by your South Texas Chevrolet dealer. Womack's wounded knee, which was injured last night, one of the keys. And the Bucks boo-boos, will they make mistakes? The Bucks have made 126 errors this year. But the Astros have made 122. Here is Womack. He was a questionable starter for tonight. He said in this morning's Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, if I don't need surgery, I'll be in there. He's in there at 281. There's strike one to Womack, the speedster who's second in the league in steals. He has six home runs and 49 runs batted in. And he's eighth in the league in base hits with 170. Among the outstanding rookies on this Pittsburgh club this year, and he smacks one to Biggio. Womack retired. He looks like he's running pretty well tonight. Supposedly sprained his knee sliding into second base last night. 
really hobbled up leaving the field. But they went down the line just fine right there. Shane Reynolds keeps a rabbit with 53 steals off base. Moves along to Turner Ward. What a pleasant surprise Turner Ward has been. There are many pleasant surprises, both in the rookies and the veteran players. And he comes as a veteran, 32 years old. He was released this spring by the White Sox organization. And he's rebounded to hit 346 for Pittsburgh with four homers and 22 runs batted in. Switch hitter, he's hitting 339 as a left-handed batter. Bill Spires is playing him in tight at third. Shane catches the corner, strike one, and that was consistently his tactic in the last ball game against the Dodgers, Jim. Yeah, it seemed like he was strike one all night long, and oftentimes 0-2. Oh Ward takes away, and it's one ball, one strike. Turner was drafted by the Yankees, traded to Cleveland, then he moved on to Toronto, Milwaukee. Here he is back after spending only 67 at-bats with the Brewers last year. It comes two balls and a strike to Turner Ward. He's hit for a lot of power this year. 546 slugging. Grounds this one foul. First base side two and two for his career in the big leagues. Prior to this season, he had only a 358 slugging percentage. People might look at those numbers and say, wait a minute, he's only got four home runs and 14 doubles, but he hasn't had that many at bats. That's why the slugging percentage is so high. Gene Lamont has been able to fit things together awfully well here. Plugging the different players into different situations. Ward has just 130 very effective at bats. Line drive center. Base hit in front of Hidalgo, who's very deep. Ward, who has three steals and four tries, is aboard with the game's first hit for Al Martin. Pitch, a very good pitch, thinking away towards the outside corner. He just reaches out and pokes it into center field. Al Martin said before this game that he wanted to try to keep these games with the Astros as low key as possible. Said we need to win four to three, four to two, play our style. That's all. He has 11 long balls, 53 runs batted in, hitting 287. It's strike one. He's hacking right away. Astros have been alone in first since mid-July. Pirates playing catch-up at one point. Pittsburgh trailed by six and a half. Martin's a 29-year-old veteran leader of this club, but he too has been out with injuries for several weeks. One and one to Al. Al came up through a football background. Turned down a scholarship offer to USC. He did not play baseball until his senior year in high school. The scouts coming to look at Dave Hansen, who was with the Dodgers, now with the Cubs, caught a glimpse of Martin, and that's how he attracted their attention. And at the knees, and it's one and two for Shane. Shane is facing this club for the first time this season. Last year, he pitched very well twice, going one and oh. Now, Martin didn't like it. If this is going to be the strike zone, Shane Reynolds can really take advantage of it. Knee high, maybe a little below. Inside corner, tough pitch for anybody to get to. That's a little lower. It's two balls and two strikes with Kevin Young on deck. Shane is 5-1 and one in his career against the Pirates. He's not lost to them since July of 94 here. And that was a game in which he worked in relief. Those are great numbers for Shane. Two complete games, and they were shutouts. One of those was in 95 at Houston, 11 to nothing. The other was in 94 at Houston, also 11 to nothing. Typical, typical of Shane Reynolds, great to strikeout to walk ratio, 45 strikeouts, seven walks in those games. Against the Pirates. Runner goes, bouncer to Biggio. He has nothing at second, gets the out at first. Martin moves Ward to second on out number two. Kevin Young and the crowd is responding to Young. Young came in after a tough loss a couple of nights ago and he read the riot act to his teammates. He didn't think they were bearing down. 
and he said he didn't like the way it was reported in the papers. It was reported as if he was mad at Freddie Garcia for making an error. That wasn't it, he said. It was just a general comment on the Pirates' style of play. He's hitting 318. He leads them in homers and runs batted in, but he missed five weeks with a hand injury. Young looks at ball one. Kevin was drafted by the Pirates. They released him in 96. Kansas City picked him up as a free agent, and then he returned as a free agent this past winter. In the interim, he really acquired some hitting skills. He is an outstanding defensive player. That's a strike call. It's one and one. The young went out with a ligament injury near the bottom knuckle of his right thumb. And since he's been back for only a few days, he's tried to simplify his swing. Whatever he's doing, it's working. <laughs> it is. He was the fifth pirate to be out with a hand injury this year. He lifts this one, but it'll hook. And it'll hook a long way foul up over the Astros bullpen for strike two. Fork while he put a pretty good swing on it. Shane got a break. He hooked it foul. At one point in Shane's career, 95, he had 22 consecutive shutout innings against this club. That's foul back the other way. Kevin Young went to Southern Mississippi. He's a native of Alpena, Michigan. First made it to the big leagues in 92. Never really hit for much power, but he's developed some this year. In his last 10 games, he's shown some power. Some of those before the injury, and that goes back more than a month. That's ball two. The Cardinals beat the Cubs today, 12-9, to with another McGuire homer, his 52nd. St. Louis remains a presence in the division along with Cincinnati both trailing by seven before the games today Cardinals will have four coming up with the Pirates here after the Astros leave town fly ball right field Derek Bell near the line for the third out in the first inning no runs a hit a runner stranded at second for the Bucks. it's nothing nothing after one Pittsburgh Astros and the Pirates are scoreless. Friday, September 26, the Astros host the Pirates at 7.05. The first 15,000 fans get an Astros brush cotton baseball cap from Coca-Cola and Randall. Get your tickets at the Dome box office, Ticketmaster, or call 713-6-ASTROS. We have some Astros fans here in the crowd. They're being kind of quiet now, uh, Jim. The crowd is pretty vocal, but they're not being bothered at all. And they had to come out, of course, to see their Astros Absolutely. in Pittsburgh. Full regalia. You bet. Luis Gonzalez was at the plate when Jeff Bagwell was thrown out trying to steal to end the first inning. By the way, Bagwell needs one more steal to join the 30-30 club and become the first full-time first baseman to do that. Also the first Astro to do it. But Gonzalez gets a fresh count in a nothing-nothing game in the second. Schmidt catches the outside corner. There's strike one with good movement on his fastball. Of course, Baggy would be a member of the 40-30 club. Yes, that's even rarer. One ball, one strike. Jason Schmidt, uh, like many baseball players, is a little superstitious. Before his most recent start, he asked for some help about the home run ball. There's a strike call, one and two. He's allowed 15 homers in 173 innings. Not a particular problem for him, but... He wanted equipment manager Roger Wilson to draw a picture of a bomb with a line through it. Symbol for no bombs in that game. Two balls and two strikes. He hasn't given up many on the year, but I guess he had a streak of uh, four or five starts where he'd given up at least one, so he wanted to put an end to that. He had Roger drawing, drawing uh, shamrocks in his hats as well. <laughs> Just outside, it's three and two now to Gonzalez. Now Roger created those shamrocks and they worked very well for a time so he kept that inside his cap. He's wearing a Jason Kendall's wearing a good luck charm. That's fouled away. A 
10 year old girl gave him a good luck charm last week so Jason is wearing that and Dale Swain has uh, gone full circle he had a beard he didn't think that any more hits in it he shaved that off and now he's grown it back as he's gone through the various cycles of slumping with and without the beard seems to be one of the most common there he is the, the facial hair uh-huh seems to be a common trend well it's back I'm not going to shave till I get a hit <laughs> start hitting or pitching well you keep the beard you start to struggle you lose it it's just something to do over the course of a long season <laughs> Three balls and two strikes to Gonzalez. Nothing, nothing in the second. Gonzalez cracks one to center field. Going back, Turner Ward. He won't get this one. It is gone. A bomb for Luis Gonzalez. His ninth of the year. And the Astros take a one-nothing lead. A dead center field line drive shot from Gonzo. Wow, Turner Ward's first move on that ball was actually in. He was really fooled by it. Sets up for the fastball away. Didn't quite get it out there, but Canto gives it a ride. Pretty much dead center field. So much for the no bomb. Very impressive shot for Gonzalez. Coming, coming. And now it's Bill Spires batting. Spires at 314 leads the club in hitting. Takes a high fastball for ball one. He has three homers and 40 runs batted in. Well, Gonzalez hits the 120th home run for the Astros. Pirates have 119. These clubs are, are similar in some ways. There's a strike call, one on one, but they're vastly different in pitching. The Astros much better pitching. They're second in the league in the RA. The Pirates are eighth. And Houston has scored quite a few more runs than Pittsburgh. Two balls and a strike. The Astros Jim have outscored their opponents by 97 runs this year now, and yet they're only two games over 500. Pirates have been outscored by 53. Now they are quite different in that sense. That's lined up the right field line, foul. Atlanta's having quite a first inning, nine to one. The Braves lead the Mets. Jeff Blauser hit a three-run homer. And earlier, the Braves have broke the National League record for grand slams by a team in a season. When Ryan Klesko hit one. 12 grand slams for the Braves as a team. Now if the Mets come back from that one. <laughs> we know they're really having a special year. You're right. Two balls, two strikes to Spires. He shoots one up the middle for a base hit. Nice solid line drive swing. And Spires continues the Houston second with nobody out. Richard Hidalgo follows. Jason Kendall out to talk with Jason Smith. Maybe discussing you know, fine to throw a lot of fastballs. It is a good game plan. But let's be careful with the location. Pitch about belt high. Billy Spires gets on top of it and hits a BB up the middle. Spires right on that one, and he's on for a 314 hitting center fielder, Richard Hidalgo. With very little time in the big leagues. He's driven in a couple of runs. Hidalgo has just 35 at bats, but it tells you what the Astros think of him that he's playing an important game in September. Hidalgo looks, and it's ball one. Swinging the bat very well since he was called up. He's going to go deep here pretty soon. He's getting some good swings. Looks very comfortable in the batter's box. Third baseman Randa's even with the bag. Nunez and Womack a double play depth with nobody out. Spires is going. Looping fly ball right center field. Spires will hit back. And Turner Ward makes the grab right in front of Gian. There's the first out. Ricky Gutierrez will follow. Batting seven. Shortstop number 12. Turner Ward Ricky calling. Gutierrez. We saw earlier in the year, Gian had a run in with Jermaine Allensworth on a ball in the outfield. They actually had some words in the pirate dugout at the end of the inning. Jose likes to get everything out there. Actually, center fielder has priority on all fly balls. If he calls it, the other guy should back off. Gutierrez has 31 runs batted in to go with a 263 batting average. The 
everyday shortstop now with the injury to Tim Bogar. There's ball one to Ricky. Both these clubs have had shortstop injuries this year, and they both use several shortstops. Kevin Polkovich has been out for quite some time, and with his injury after the earlier injury to Kevin Elster, the Pirates went out and obtained Sean Dunstan. Dunstan was to have started this game, but he had to be scratched from the lineup with a back problem. Gutierrez is sort of a half swing. Foul tips it, and it's one and one. Tim Bogar is with the Astros very much physically and in spirit. He has a cast on the broken left arm. And if the Astros go fairly deep into postseason play, he might be recovered by then, but really unlikely he would play any with all that rust he would have accumulated by then. But it's important, Jim, for a guy like Bogar, who was a steadying influence on the infield, just to be there physically for his teammates. Such a popular guy in the clubhouse. Meanwhile, he's a big cheerleader for Ricky Gutierrez right now. Two and one. It's an interesting thing about sports that two guys who are fighting tooth and nail for a job, one of them gets hurt and he becomes the other guy's biggest supporter. Mm -hmm. And even I've seen guys that are battling for playing time all season long and you know they want to be the guy that's out there, but off the field they're the best of friends and you would think it would create a lot of professional jealousy. And in some cases it does. Chopped to third, but it's foul for Joe Randa. Count goes to two balls and two strikes. The Pirates have been a remarkable story this year with a payroll lower than a few of the game's highest players. And Gene Lamont's club swept the Chicago White Sox with Albert Bell, who makes more than the entire Pirates team coming in here. Bell and Frank Thomas almost shut down completely by this Pirates pitching staff earlier this year in interleague play. And Boniface, the general manager, he's really assembled a scrappy team. Gets his first strike out of the night. It's out number two. The slider from Jason Smith. You saw the pitch that Shane threw last inning. Looks like Bill Hahn's going to have a zone that's down below the knees. Hitters will have to make the adjustment. Brad Osmus hitting 266 has three long balls. He's driven in 40 runs. Two outs, the infielders back up now. Osmus to left center field, Turner Ward coming in. Two in, the Astros second with a leadoff homer from Gonzalez and another hit. They are now in front in the middle of the second inning, one to nothing. On Fox Sports Southwest is brought to you by your South Texas Chevy dealers. Choose from the best lineup of Chevy cars and trucks at your 44 area Chevy first team dealers today. And by Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouse. When it comes to home improvement, Lowe's knows. Shane Reynolds has a 1-0 lead here before a nice-sized crowd, considering especially the rain. It is half-price night in Pittsburgh. But those who have been here all year and for a while prior to that, Jim, tell us there would have been a big crowd no matter what the price is for this one. I really think they were pointing to this series. Fun night to be at the ballpark with the first-place club in town. Here at the confluence. Oh yes. I have to say confluence every time you do a telecast in Pittsburgh. Don't you? It's obligatory. Joe Randa had a nine-game hitting streak until last night. That was snapped as he went 0 for 3 and was hit by a pitch. He was hitting 343 during that streak. 292 overall for Joe. It's a one hopper to Bill Spires. Spires gets the first out in easy fashion. And Jason Kendall will follow. Great experience for this Pittsburgh ball club to be in contention in mid-September. Something hardly anyone expected, Jim. About the only guy with any experience over there is Gene Lamont when he managed the 93 White Sox. He knows about that kind of pressure, but this year it's been very much a low-pressure environment, and the Pirates acted as if they were not in contention. Now they have to admit they are. Kendall at 295 has been a big reason with seven homers and 47 runs driven in. Strike one to Jason, a strong rookie of the year contender last year, and this year he's even better. He's hitting 318 in September. 
This guy, like Craig Biggio, has had some run-ins with pitches. He's been hit 29 times. That's a club record. It's 0-2. Reminds you a lot of the younger Craig Biggio, doesn't he? He does. Catcher with speed. He's got 16 stolen bases. Hits a lot of doubles. Hits for a high average. He's hitting 332 in his last 67 games. Handle the shortstop. Gutierrez. Two outs, and Shane Reynolds is making it pretty easy. He's getting a lot of routine out so far. Just like last time out, jumping ahead in the count. That forces the hitters to be more aggressive. They're more likely to swing at a pitcher's pitch. Shane, after win number eight of the year, he's not pleased with that, but he is here now when he can be a very important factor, Jim. And it's not Shane's fault. He had a, a knee injury. It cost him dearly. Prior to that injury, he was pitching great, and now he's regaining that form. Jose Guillen, 268, 12 homers at 60, runs batted in. Has a cannon arm. There's strike one on Guillen. As Jim mentioned, one of the very young players on this Pirates club. He's hitting 302 this month, coming out of a one for 20 slide. Third among all National League rookies in runs batted in behind Scott Rowland and Andrew Jones. It's in the dirt. It's one and one. Not a bad tactic because Guillen is a free swinger. Oh, big time. With 16 walks, I think. <laughs> yeah, this guy's up there for only one purpose. 470 ABs. He's walked 16 times. Only 20 years old. He was the MVP of the Carolina League. Class A Lynchburg last year. Where he hit 21 homers and drove in 94. Ground ball back to Shane. Who makes it a three ground ball out inning. Five in a row set down by the Astros. They lead it one to nothing after two. Looking for league leaders. The Astros lead the Pirates one to nothing in the top of the third inning. There's one. There's another one in some categories. Brought to you by Bill Hurd Chevrolet. Well, in this one, it steals of third. And Tony Womack is second to Deion Sanders with 14 steals of third. Craig Biggio has a dozen. Of course, Deion is finished playing for the year, and he's just three steals ahead of Womack for the overall stolen base title. Tony has an excellent chance to bag that in his rookie season. Craig well, Biggio is 40. Womack should pass Deion Sanders. I don't think he's going to pass him in steals in third, however. Uh, no. Shane Reynolds will try to be the leadoff man who reaches here in the third inning. Luis Gonzalez led off the second with a home run. Shane hitting 128. Jason Schmidt throws ball one. Shane had six hits in 47 at bat. Saw a stat the other day said the average major league pitcher hits 140. Really? That's the average now for major Not pitchers. very good, is it? Well, it, it was, I found it interesting just to, okay, what, what constitutes a good hitting pitcher or a bad hitting pitcher? At least uh, now we know the, uh, what the average is. Yeah. So would you say you were a little bit below average or quite well, a bit below you average? know, I got robbed a lot, Brownie. I hit uh -huh. into a lot of tough outs. Just goes to show you, you cannot uh, put a number on a player's value. You can't trust statistics. You were really a lot better hitter than the numbers showed. You could really foul the ball off at the best of them. That's important. There's strike three. Schmidt gets his second call third strike. Craig Biggio will bat next. Biggio let off the game with a ground ball to short. Pirates were somewhat worried about Jason Schmidt this spring. He had a very slow heart rate and had some lightheadedness during the winter and again in the spring. They had to attach a halter monitor to him and it revealed that his heart momentarily stopped when he was at rest. It's a fairly normal condition for well-conditioned young people. But uh, they say the only time he's likely to suffer any effects is uh, when he's resting, not when he's pitching. Biggio takes. It's one and one. And now, obviously, I have this vision of Jason just constantly running everywhere he goes. <laughs> running in place, watching a movie or something. Yeah. Biggio, a 320 hitter on the road with 15 bombs outside of the spacious Astrodome. It misses with a fastball. It's two and one. Schmidt, at one point this year, hit a batter in six games in a row. Now, Biggio, as you know, has been hit a whole bunch this season. So this matchup might result in one tonight. He's 
staying away so far from Biggio. He probably knows that's going to happen if he comes inside. Two balls and two strikes. They've got Patty Biggio sitting at home cringing. <laughs> Sorry, Patty. Greg's been hit 30 times. Fouls it back. Two balls and two strikes. Earlier this year, Jason was wondering what it took to get a victory. Started out one and four. Came out of one start because of a blister. He was thrown out in the second inning of another. Oh, sorry, Patty. <laughs> 31 times this year. That one really hurt. You're like Nostradamus. Oh, that's awful. But he had been staying away and then apparently decided he just couldn't live out there on Biggio. If Biggio shoots the ball to right so well and handles the fastball up, you have to pitch him in. And the elbow pad for Biggio, he just decided he had to do it because he couldn't play it straight and, and not and dive. He was diving out over the plate to try to get the outside corner that the umpires were calling on him. He was getting hit all the time, so he decided to wear the pad. Either that or stop going after that pitch, and you're going to make a lot of outs that way. He's on for Derek Bell. Bell grounded out to third in the first inning. One nothing Houston in the third. What a play by Nunez. Flipping to second, but safe. Biggio beat the play. Nunez made quite an effort going in the hole, and then he had to twist and throw across his body. He couldn't get much on the throw. It's an infield hit for Bell. Nunez is a good looking young player. Derek Bell can credit this base hit to Craig Biggio. Great hustle. That's great hustle. Another one of those, what does Biggio do for your club that most people don't notice? 21 year old Abraham Nunez almost got the lead runner. Now two are on for Jeff Bagwell with one out. Bagwell walked in the first inning and was thrown out trying to steal. to Jeff who was featured in a recent article in the Sporting News making a strike. He has a career batting average in September of 320. The article was about the top September players of recent years. Ken Griffey Jr., Raul Mondesi, and Bagwell. Three players listed. Now it's one and one. But Bagwell said the numbers might look good, but that's not what I'm about said he'd like to do some big things in September but all he cares about is getting to postseason then he said in another story recently he just wants to be on the bottom of that pile when they celebrate Jim. <laughs> That's a great way to put it. He said but don't step on my hand. Wings and misses and it's one and two. He vividly remembers 1991 when the Braves clinched against the Astros watching that celebration by Atlanta. With men in scoring position, he's hit higher than his overall average. One of the worst feelings in the game is to sit there in the other dugout and watch the other club celebrate a championship. It really is. Turn towards second. The Astros sometimes send both runners when they have men at first and second. The count is one and two. And earlier you saw the steals of third. Biggio has made teams wise up about that possibility that he might be going. Bagwell hits a rocket to center field. Biggio's coming home. Mike Covage waving him. And the throw goes into second base. The Astros lead it two to nothing. Bagwell gets RBI number 125. And Biggio now has scored 136 runs this year. It started when he was hit on the left elbow. Perfect example of Astros baseball 1997. Biggio gets hit by the pitch, hustles to second base to beat a force play, and then scores on a Jeff Bagwell base hit. Great turn of third. Smart play by Turner Ward just to throw that ball into second base to prevent those back runners from advancing. It really was. Now there's a meeting at the mound. Pitching coach is Pete Bukovic. Astros lead it two to nothing. Vern Rule, the pitching coach, right there in that dark dugout. Here in Pittsburgh. Very meaningful game for the Astros who 
I wouldn't say they're afraid of Francisco Cordova, but he pitches tomorrow night, and he's 2-0 against them. And in 18 innings, Cordova has allowed two hits and no runs against Houston this year. <laughs> they have every reason <laughs> to be afraid of him. Yeah. Luis Gonzalez ripped a line drive homer in the second inning, his ninth of the year. And the Astros have had only nine home runs all year by their cleanup men. Ball one. Lately, it's been more encouraging for the future for the Astros because whoever's been hitting fourth, whether it's Gonzalez or Sean Barry, has picked up the pace behind Bagwell. That could bring Bagwell into a furious clip at the end of the year. Roll to Womack's left. He'll go to second. And Nunez doesn't get the double play. Second out of the inning turned in when Bagwell is forced from four to six. And Bell takes third. Gonzalez reaching. Pretty good sinker. Hits it off the end of the bat. Doesn't hit it particularly hard. That's why it becomes difficult to turn the double play. Bagwell went to the outside of the bag, so Nunez would have a tougher throw to make. Bill Spires smacked a single up the middle in the second inning. Working the count to 2-2. Two -two. He's had just an outstanding year. With a lot of clutch base hits. Ball one to Spires, who starts at third tonight. Sean Barry's been getting his time in lately. So the Astros are cultivating some options at third base for the postseason if they get there. Spires takes a very good pitch over the inside corner. It's one and one. That's a really difficult pitch for a batter to hit when it starts inside and then comes back in over the corner, Jim. Very difficult. Oral Hershiser made a living throwing that pitch. Greg Maddox does it all the time. Look at those numbers. 443. Runners in scoring position. Outrageous. This one gets up the first baseline. Bell coming home. The throw to Schmidt. Safe. Derek Bell with all out hustle comes in quickly. On a ball that didn't get away more than about 10 feet. The Astros now lead it three to nothing. Great hustle. He's gone in a flash, wasn't he? That's the only way you score in that ball. You have to anticipate it. Break as soon as it's in the dirt. Normally, if the ball doesn't get far enough away, you'll be able to recover and get back. But you have to break right away. Great head first dive, avoiding the tag. And the ball was there. Schmidt was moving, though. He wasn't set, so Bell got in. Wild pitch. Bell scoring. Gonzalez taking second. Count two and one. Pirates have a right-hander throwing in the bullpen. Give you some idea of how, how important this game is to Gene Lamont, treating it like a playoff game. It really is. Luke Sadowski working. Three balls and one strike. Even though the Pirates have dropped eight of their last 12, Gene Lamont said, well, even if we split, it's not the end of the world here like to do better and I think that's a pretty good way to handle a young club don't you absolutely you don't want to put the pressure on them say that they have to win two because if they don't they're going to tank on you. or you run the risk of that mm -hmm. with a veteran club you might be able to square up with everybody and admit it three and two now what you believe and what you say are oftentimes two different things in this game maybe that he feels he has to win both of these games to have any chance at all but he's not going to tell his club that Pops it back, and it's out of play. Three and two. Really nice, though, to see baseball alive here in Pittsburgh this year. It's been one of the great stories in baseball this year. It's funny to see some of the comments of some of their players in the local newspapers. One guy will say, we have to win both of these games. Another guy will say, well, <laughs> it's okay if we split. It's not the end of the world. They've drawn more than a million and a half. They're averaging 20,720. Cordova, who pitches tomorrow night. Very interested in this game. Spires to right field. Guillen on one hop. Gonzalez comes home. Here's the gun from Guillen. And a slide. And another safe call. Kendall is furious with Bill Hyde. 
Gonzalez moved into home plate to make it four to nothing. Bill Spires comes through again with a man in scoring position, but the Pirates thought they had the out at home, and they're arguing with Hahn. Very animated argument with Kendall. And Gene Lamont joining in. Now he's going to demonstrate the play. <laughs> he went up the third baseline. It looked to me like Jose Guillen had a chance to catch this ball. And maybe felt like with his arm he had a better chance of getting it out this way. As a cannon, he really shows it off. But it's up the line just a little bit. And impossible to tell there. Maybe we'll get a better look at it here. Folks in the stadium saw an angle, and they're pulling pretty hard. And it's tough to tell from that angle as well. But the runner was by the catcher. Still, he might have been tagged out. Sometimes it's harder to get a call. It's a single for Spires. He gets his 41st RBI. Bill is two for two. Kendall stays in the game. And that's important to the Pirates, but they trail four to nothing. The rally started with a hit batsman by Jason Schmidt. Then Bell hustled and Biggio hustled into an infield hit. Bagwell RBI single, a wild pitch. Fires RBI single. Now it's Hidalgo. He pops it back off the end of the bat. This will be out of play. Strike one. You mentioned that reaction by the crowd. It was noticeable for our viewers at home. They could hear that uh, response verbally from the fans. And probably it was from replays on television screens inside the stadium at the concession stands. As you know, the umpires would not allow those controversial plays to be replayed up on the scoreboard. And that was not the case. It was not replayed. It's an interesting case of human nature. They probably didn't have any better replays than we did. Uh -huh. And they saw it as out. Pitch is in tie one on one. But you may have noticed during that time when the fans were so vocal, Bill Hahn diverted his attention right away from the argument. Immediately, he looked out at the center field scoreboard to see if that play was being shown. And it wasn't. Pitch is on the corner, and it's one and two. Astros lead it four to nothing against this young Bucko club. A battling team right after the all-star break these teams were neck and neck they split the four game series and the Astros have been unable to pull away fly ball left field Martin broke back now he's coming in shortstop way out and it gets loose Spires is coming home Turner Ward with a throw to the plate it cut off five to nothing and now here's a rundown play on Hidalgo and he is tagged out by Joe Randa but a defensive mistake allows the Astros to score another run. They come up with four runs. And in the middle of the third inning, they're in front now. Five to nothing here in Pittsburgh as we join Kevin. All right. Thank you very much, Bill Brown. Quick check of what's going on in the National League. We start earlier this afternoon. Mark McGuire looking for his 19th home run since being traded to the St. Louis Cardinals. And he got it today at Wrigley Field. High and deep and gone. His 53rd overall made it 6 nothing in the third inning with a solo shot. And the Cardinals cruise on to win it over the Cubs 12-9. Matt Morris gets his 11th win of the season. More long balls in Atlanta. Mets visiting the Braves. A major league record 12th grand slam for the Atlanta Braves. This one goes deep and gone. Ryan Klesko, his 24th. The slam makes it 9-1. to one in the bottom of the fifth inning. Nine runs in the first inning alone for Atlanta. Doubleheader, Phillies win it in the opener over Florida, 5-2. to two. Garrett Stevenson with the win. And in the nightcap, Florida leading, looking for a split, 4-1 to one in the bottom of the sixth. Kurt Abbott with a two-run triple. It is 5-0. Astros on top at Three Rivers. The bottom of the third is next. September 25th. It's your last chance to see Ryan Sandberg. The Astros and the Cubs play at 7.05 in the Dome. It's half-price group night. Groups of 24 or more fans get Astro tickets for half price. 713-799-9567 is the number to call. We look forward to that evening. And the evenings are dwindling. There's six home games remaining. Abraham Nunez comes up hitting 263 with no homers and four runs batted in. Switch hitting shortstop with speed. He has only 19 big league at bats. 21 years old. 
ball one low and outside to Nunez, who last year was a Class A St. Catharines in the Toronto organization. Traded with five other players in the deal for Orlando Merced, Carlos Garcia, and Dan Plesak over the winter. Started this season in Class A Lynchburg. That's a long way in one year. And he played 78 games there. Then he moved up to Double A Carolina in late June. Hit very well there. And here he is because of injuries starting at shortstop tonight. Two balls and a strike. Made his big league debut on the 27th of August. And he went two for five in his first game with a two run triple against the Dodgers. Two and two. This is his sixth start at shortstop. Abraham Nunez. Pirates just continue to stockpile young talent and they recently were given the award by uh, Baseball Weekly as the top minor league organization. Strikeout of Nunez. That's number one for Shane Reynolds. I guess it stands to reason that they would have a lot of prospects with all the deals they've had to make unloading veteran players four prospects. This is a Shane Reynolds fork ball that just dive bombs off the table. Jason Schmidt is out of this ball game. A pinch hitter, Adrian Brown, an outfielder, comes up to bat for him. Brown, another young outfielder, is 23, is hitting only 187 with one homer, and he's driven in 10 runs. Brown was recalled from Calgary on the 2nd of September. He's been with the Pirates earlier this year, from mid-June to mid-May to mid-June, rather, and the pitch is the ball. 1-0 to Adrian Brown. Jason Schmidt. Lasted three innings, giving up six hits and five runs. He had one walk, two strikeouts, and a hit batsman. One ball and one strike to Adrian Brown, who hit 319 at Calgary in 62 games. And he stole 20 bases there. Pirates stay home for four more with the Cardinals after the Astros leave. Then they go to New York for two, have an off day, and finish with three in Houston. Strike one, one and two. Interesting to, to look at their notes tonight, Jim. They have their remaining schedule for the year, and they have uh, September 29th, an off day, and September 30th, Division Series game number one on their schedule. Optimistic thinking. <laughs> little bravado. Yes, it is. And why not? Still a ball and two strikes. And for the Astros, the next series in Cincinnati doesn't seem to be that easy on paper. The Reds are playing very good baseball. And they have some good pitching lined up for Houston. You know we'll see Tomko. Fine rookie. Yeah, he'll pitch a Saturday. Dave Burba Friday night. Mike Morgan Sunday. Ken Murphy Monday. Line drive looping in. Base hit center field. Adrian Brown comes up with a pinch single batting for Jason Schmidt. Hit number two for the Bucks. Let's look ahead and see how those pitching matchups go. Chris Holton, Dave Burba, Mike Hampton, Brett Tomko, Ramon Garcia, Mike Morgan, and Shane Reynolds, Kent Murphy. Those game times are different for every single game in that series. Consult your local listings. Tony Womack grounded out in the first inning. Womack was drafted by the Pirates in 91. He's had six years of minor league seasoning. Ball one to Tony. They were adopting that old name they used to use the earlier uh, back in the 80s, actually, or 70s, for Frank Taveras. They called him the Pittsburgh Steeler. That's what they call Tony Womack this year. Got to work football into everything. One and one. Well, Womack uh, was a stealer no matter where he was. He stole 237 bases in six minor league years. and 73% of the time he made it. There's the Steelers jacket. They're always ready for football, even at baseball games. Very color coordinated, the Steelers and the Pirates. Oh, yeah. Black and gold. Yeah. Both, both franchises wear the same color. A little penguins for that matter. Uh huh. Yeah, it's a blue collar town. And in fact, there's a strike on right now involving some of the stadium employees. 
The ushers and ticket takers are on strike. Foul ball two and two. It also extends to the grounds crew. And we understand they had to have a backup grounds crew here for this game tonight, Jim. They flew somebody in from Bradenton. Recruited uh, some locals with no experience. I think it was a big concern when the rain started to fall. <laughs> it was. There they are. Yeah. <laughs> We're ready in case it rains. Two balls and two strikes. The Astros lead it 5 nothing here in the third. safe at first. Vigio is there to play the carom. He got the force out on Adrian Brown for the second out. I think it might be the Astros night. It might be. This ball is hit very hard, but it hits the mound. Would have been a base hit. Nice convenient hop for Vig. Flips to Ricky. Womack, despite the uh, knee injury last night, runs well enough to beat the double play. Max aboard, breathing hard. Turner Ward, the batter. Ward got a single to center field in the first inning. This fires even with a bag at third. Ground ball to Vigio's left. And on to Bagwell to retire Ward. And in the third inning, Milo Hamilton joins Jim for the middle innings here on Fox Sports Southwest. The Astros leading at five to nothing. Top of the fourth upcoming Astros five Buckos no score visit a new Big 12 school every week on Big 12 showcase tonight at midnight and again on Friday at 530 Big 12 showcase hits the campus of Iowa State for the latest news from the Big 12 conference watch Big 12 showcase only on Fox Sports Southwest Jason Schmidt's night is done Jose Silva a young right hander just 23 years of age on the Astros, worked eight times off, for the Pirates Garrett. this year, one and one with a 7.00 earned run average. Ricky Gutierrez set to lead it off for the Astros in the fourth, and to call it for you, here's Milo. All right, Ace, we're ready to go here with this total board. Houston 5-6-0, Pittsburgh 0-2-0, and Silva's ready to work. First pitch of the fourth. Line drive center, and it'll drop. Oh, boy. <laughs> Ward's probably saying, a little slick out here. He's lucky that ball didn't go to the wall. <laughs> he sure is. There's been some strange plays already in the Pirate outfield tonight. And what about a couple of nice bounces? The one yeah. on the wild pit. And what a read by Bell to score on that wild pitch. A great house. Astro is really playing good baseball tonight, taking advantage of opportunities and Ward misplayed it a little bit, but then made a great play at the end to keep it going from at least a triple. And the other bounce on the ball that Biggio, the ball ricocheted off the mound. That could have just as well been up the middle. But you get an out of it and force the head man. So maybe some good things have happened. The biggest thing for me in this game, and we got a long way to go is the fact that we've shaken the old bugaboo of after you score 12, 14, and 15 runs, your bats haven't gone to sleep, and they've done that a few times this year after some outbursts. Osmus, the batter, flied to center in the second inning. Judy with his lead. Capper foul, past Mike Cubbage at third. You never know how a club's gonna respond from one day to the next, but what you like to see is, is what we've seen here tonight with Biggio hustling Bagwell, Derek Bell scoring on that ball. You, you want that. Those plays are made because of concentration and staying in the game and, be, and anticipating plays. And it looks like Osmus needs a new bat. For you folks who call all the time and wanting to know what Halo is in our dugout, they've got it in this dugout. They've got them in a lot of dugouts. In fact, the foul poles at Montreal got Halo up and down. It's a firm that makes a lot of the things that folks buy as souvenirs, and they wanted to advertise and have their name in front of the public, and how <laughs> better with all the shots that are taken in dugouts. That's a, some guy came up with a pretty good marketing plan, I think. Well, since they're a marketing company, they ought to be in Anaheim. 
<laughs> it wouldn't help. The <laughs> first, not close. Osmus and then Reynolds. Gutierrez with a base hit gives Goody an eight game hitting streak. Now had 11 hits in his last 32 at bats. Checked by Silva. Well, you can really tell. Two things will tell you the intensity and frustrations that can be vented here. The argument on the play at the plate. And if it had happened to us, we'd have been doing the same thing because that's the climate. But as quick as they warmed up their bullpen. Yeah. That's the playoff game for Gene Lamont, no doubt about it. In the dirt, good smother of it by Kendall. Well, you talk about a guy who's improved. What about that throw Kendall made on Bagwell on the cat stealing in the first? Oh, That's good. about as big a margin as you're going to see. He's throwing out 40% this year. Really bounces around behind the plate. He's looking into the dugout now. Silva, their second pitcher. Good breaking pitch. Oh boy. Uncle Charlie in there. First strikeout for Silva. Look at the breakout. No optical illusion here, folks. Slider, curveball, slurvy type pitch. Freezes Brad and then breaks over the inside corner. Silva, another young prospect for this club, just 23 years old, came over in a deal with the Blue Jays. Orlando Merced deal. Change in that bunting stance, but the ball came up and in, just moved back out of there. Chain looked at strike three called in the third inning. Jason Schmidt, when he analyzes what happened here tonight, may go back and think about the long newspaper article he gave. I think he might have pumped himself into a frenzy. I mean, you can do it. Yeah, you may be right. There's a punt up the right side. It's going to get the runner in the scoring position. Young comes to get it, throws behind to Womack. 3-4 on the sack. In other words, he pitched outside of himself, not within himself tonight. Well, you know, there are games in the middle of the summer, if you're not in the playoff race, where sometimes you have to do things to create adrenaline and pump yourself up. But a game like this is going to have enough pressure and enough tension uh, to start talking in the newspaper the day before about how every time you go out there it's like the seventh game of the World Series and how fired up you're going to be. Sometimes that can work against you. Five sacrifices now for Shane Reynolds. Runner in scoring position for Biggio. Who in effect started the big four run inning in the third with one out when he got hit by a pitch. Strike right on the knees from Silva. Had Chuck Tanner on the long rain delay tonight on radio. How's Chuck doing? Well, he's doing great, but he really gives some bouquets to Cam Boniface, general manager of the Pirates. When he had to have a fire sale, he got some people nobody knew anything about. Obviously, Cam would tell you he had some pretty good scouting advice because they've got some people who are going to play here for a while. And what they've done here is no accident with this improved club. Breaking ball. They want an appeal. Uh, no swing. Palms down for the first base umpire, Ed Rapuano. Ed Rapuano. His palms aren't always down. They may have been up handing the league president a check yesterday. Ed was fined by Leonard Coleman for ejecting Albert Bell in an interleague game. Albert was called out on strikes. That is... Uh, Helmet and bat down at home plate. Ed thought that was a show of disrespect. He ejected Albert Bell. Well, and you know, all of us who saw that at that time said we thought Rapuano overreacted because Bell really didn't show him up. And now he's a little lighter in the pocketbook. Down and out, and then that'll push it to 3 1 on Vigio, and Derek Bell is due up next. And an umpire's uh, anticipate. Certain reactions from certain players, and with Albert Bell's reputation, Rapuano probably thought old Albert was giving him the business. Three balls and a strike, two outs, runner at second, Gutierrez. That 
gets the ball and he walks him. Two on for Bell. Here comes Pete Vukovic. And their pen is already working, Jim. Yeah, with all the youngsters on this pitching staff, I bet Vukovic has worn a pretty good pass down between the dugout and the mound. Well, he's had to kind of be a father figure and nurse guys through. This is a project. Luke probably more like an Uncle Buck figure than a father figure. Yeah. <laughs> I remember him as a Clue Hayward from the Major League movies. Here's Chris Peters, a young left-hander. And next week, if he pitches real well, they're going to give him a razor. Isn't that amazing? Well, you talk about peach fuzz. All he needs is a cat and a bowl of cream. Vukovic may have reminded Silva and Kendall to make sure you pitch to Derek Bell. Don't just lay the ball down the middle because Derek Bell can really hammer a cripple fastball. Ball won to Bell. He bounced out in the first inning. Third inning had a hit. Later scored run number three on a very alert piece of base running on a wild pitch that really didn't get out of the dirt circle. But he, the figuring had to be that he could outrun Schmidt in the foot race. There's a strike. In other words, Schmidt just a bit tardy coming, and he was not going to beat Bell there to take a toss from Kendall. I think it's one of those plays you just have to anticipate. If you don't, you're not going to go. Gutierrez at second, Vigio first, two down. Pitch to Bell. Just outside. Two balls and a strike. But both these young pitchers up in the mid-90s here. Yeah, this guy has a great arm. Bouncer shortstop, Nunez, a little toss to second. And the side's retired, score at 6-4. And a single and a walk. Nothing came of it as far as on the pay station. Two are left. We're in the middle of the fourth on Fox. The Astros lead 5-0. Dan Reynolds in command, Astros five, Pirates nothing, bottom of the fourth. Here is tonight's Lowe's Home Improvement Warehouse trivia question. Who was the last Pirate player to register 200 hits in a season? Answer, fourth coming. Good one. You have to be in the right field to name that guy. Martin bounced the second in the opening inning. Seven ground ball outs recorded by Shane. There's a line drive right to Bagwell. One away in the fourth inning. Not only is Shane pitching a good game as far as using all the pitches and the location and leading, but he's got an economy drive going on. He's not throwing many pitches, Jimmy. Yeah, this is really fun to watch. When Reynolds has his game on, I enjoy watching him pitch more than some great power pitchers because he's a real master. This is Kevin Young. Fly to right in the opening inning. Here's a guy who had a rebirth the second time around with his pirate team. Smash to Spires. Came up on him a little, but the good hands were there. That was an all-state play, and it's two down. Now here's our answer. You heard the clue from Milo Hamilton. Question was, uh, who was the last Pirate player to register 200 hits in a season? The answer, who was Dave Parker, 215 in 1977? En route to an MVP, I believe, for that total. And he was in the right field. Good clue. Very nice. The Cobra. He was all of that. I'm telling you, if you were around that club and you walked into a clubhouse and you didn't know what was going, you'd swear that he and Garner hated each other. <laughs> it was a feud. And Garner stood right up to him and he had to look up to him to stand up to him. You've been in that clubhouse, Jim. That great, big, heavy, and there's the skipper who handled him, Chuck Tanner. 
He scouts for the Milwaukee Brewers. He's here every night, lives nearby Newcastle. There's a strike call. There's a great big bat rack that they wheel out here. I mean, must weigh 500 pounds. Parker flipped that thing up like a toothpick and throw it all over the clubhouse. I mean, he could get your attention. Good to see him back. And big, he's coaching, you know, first base yeah. for uh, Terry Collins with the Angels. My favorite Parker story is with Danny Darwin, and he got in a fight in Cincinnati. Bouncer Biz, you're right there and take care of that one. One, two, three inning. So the ground ball outs continue for Shane. We have played through four on Fox. Shane Reynolds, the top dog right now, and he's leading five to nothing on Fox. Top of the fifth, Astros five, Pirates no score. Saturday the 27th, Astros and the Pirates play at 7.05. First 10,000 kids, 14 years of age and under, get a baseball bat from Coca-Cola and Randall. That should be fun. Well, there's going to be a lot of fun that last week. A lot of things going on in the Astrodome. This is Bagwell, a walk, and an RBI single. Breaking pitch, cut an outside corner at the knees. It's 0-1 to Jeff. Jeff now with 125 runs batted in to go with 40 dingers. Little tapper foul. 0-2. Gonzo's on deck. Gonzo kind of broke the ice with that homer, didn't he? He did break the ice. Exactly what he did. Bagwell used to wear this park out. O2. Oh, Bagwell has not had that kind of a year against this club. That RBI was only his third, only his fourth hit against them all year. Those just aren't Bagwell numbers against the Pirates. He was hitting about 350 against them. There's strike called. He's gone looking. Silva picks up his second strikeout. Bagwell reacted a little. He didn't think that was a strike. Do what you think. Well, it was a borderline pitch. You have a what border? Outside edge, knee high and below. Definitely a pitcher's pitch. Hans been calling that pitch. Doesn't make it easy to hit, however. Gonzo with a homer fielder's choice is George Weiss. Outside corner call again on Gonzo going away from it. So anyway, Dave Parker and Danny Darwin had a little bit of a situation at Cincinnati. And they were going back and forth. Ultimately, both got ejected. Parker was fuming now. Was there a little chin music involved? Yeah, I think he got dead, and they were yelling at each other. Benches kind of cleared. Danny was in the clubhouse, and he called over to the Reds clubhouse and asked to speak to Parker. Outside of all, one and two. Parker gets on the phone, and basically Danny said, look, if you're going to kick my butt, come on over and do it right now because I don't want to be looking over my shoulder all weekend. Parker just laughed <laughs> I'm having a hard day. Kid is eating a battery. Or Whoa, right on the knees. I tell you, this guy's uh, threading some needles here. Kendall sets up inside. He makes the pitch. A comeback fastball. Can't hit that pitch. Five outs recorded by Silva. Three of the five have been strikeouts. Not all you can do with that pitch is hit a foul between your legs. Here's Fires, two for two, with a run batted in and a run scored. And a pitch to him is in there. Well, Silva's giving them a lift that they were looking for to shut down the Astro bats. It's five to nothing, Houston. And our ball game is in the fifth inning on Fox from Three Rivers. Change up. Well, that 10 miles an hour difference. Tough to adjust. 0 oh, 2 with two outs and nobody on. Hidalgo would be next. 0 oh, 2. Womack picks it. 3 6. One, two, three. Silvers come on and look very good out of their bullpen. 
Scott puts us halfway through at middle of the fifth on Fox. Astros with a five to nothing lead. Ah, memories at this ballpark. The Houston Astros baseball on Fox Sports Southwest is brought to you by Southwest Airlines with fares so low you have the freedom to go places. And Houston Astros baseball on Fox Sports Southwest is brought to you by your Texas Jeep and Eagle dealer. Well, that last sign you looked at was the Clemente Showcase. Look at that wide-eyed guy. He's at a ball game on a school night mm, with a rain delay. Jason Kendall, the catcher, it's ball one. He grounded the short in the second inning. Normally, after four innings, a starting pitcher would have around 60 pitches thrown up there. That's down and away, ball two. Shane's far short of that. That could put him in good stead as he rolls along through the innings. There's the brain trust. Dirker in the middle with pitching coach Vern Rule on the right of your screen. Ball three now. He hadn't walked anybody. He struck out only one. He's recorded nine ground ball outs. Held them to two hits and he's leading five to nothing. Walking. Jose Guillen, who hit a comebacker to Shane in the second inning, will step up in here. What a jump this young man made, and they really think he is something for their future. He's got big time tools, has to learn to be a little bit more disciplined at the plate. He's only 21 years old. Mike to Guillen. He came, he came out of August struggling. One for his last 20. Now he's picked it up the first half of September with a 302 average and has his average for the year now at 268. Ball, one and one. I used to live uh, two blocks away from Raul Mondesi in the Dominican Republic and they work out together in the winter. With his arm and Mondesi's arm, they could probably go out their front door and play catch. Yeah. A ton of great throwing arms in the National League right now, right field. Chain out of the stretch, fouling it back. One and two to Guillen. Nunez, the shortstop, is on deck. Johnning's a little late, wanting where Sean Dunstan is. You've been reading so much about him lately with a hot bat that he brought over here. Back spasm scratched him about an hour before we got underway. So Nunez was put in the shortstop spot. The guy that played like against us like a man possessed earlier this year, Volkovic, is still hurt. Oh man. Bust one off on him and put up a K. Second strikeout tonight for Shane Reynolds. Good spot to get it after a walk to keep him from getting something going. Abraham Nunez. Abraham Nunez. I asked the pirate broadcaster, I said, you, you put the full net Abraham? They said, yeah. I said, does that mean you're telling me he's not honest enough to be called Abe yet? They didn't say. Whoa, boy, down the left side. What a swat that was. That'll put runners at second and third with one out. Boy, he just served that baby. No way a third baseman can get over and get that. He was right on the line. It's a double for Nunez. And they've set up shop here at the bottom of their order. And they'll go to their bench again. That's a good pitch. Moving down and away from Nunez, he does a nice job and just goes with it. Fires had to play even with the bag to prevent the bunt. 
Buddy Williams going to pinch hit. He's got the pop. Eddie Williams batting with two runners in scoring position and one out. Williams batting 245 against the league. Breaking ball in for a strike. He has three homers, 12 RBIs off the bench. He's one for nine with two RBIs this year. As a pirate off the bench, he's 0 for two with an RBI. Now it's got the crowd back into it. They've been quiet. Their second pitch hitter of the up. The other one, Brown in the third inning, had a base hit. Nothing blossomed out of that. Backs him away. A ball and a strike. 326 lifetime against Houston. He's a veteran. Been around a long time in a lot of different places. Cleveland, San Diego, Detroit, L.A., Japan. A lot of years in the minor leagues, a lot of up and down years. Right on the knees, a call strike. Will they come back from a trip and they unload the baggage? He knows which one's his. It's got more labels on it than anybody. Shane Reynolds in his first real trouble spot of the evening. Kendall walked. He's at third Nunez with a double at second there's one out with the Pirates batting in the fifth one two to Williams whoa burn off a corner you cannot pitch any better than that as far as going inside outside pitches tough to handle hey, Williams doesn't like the call he's letting Bill Hahn know about it that's another great pitcher's pitch that has been Bill Hahn's strike zone. And it's higher than many. Williams thought it was outside. All right, top of the order with Womack. Bounced out and hit in the force play. Bouncer going to get out of it. You bet. Score it three to one. That's some kind of pitching, Jimmy Deshaies. It was a great job. The strikeout of Williams, the key. And then he gets Womack to end the inning. They leave two. You're on Fox. What a ball game going. What atmosphere at Three Rivers. All on Fox for you. Five to nothing Astros. New pitcher coming on. We'll tell you about him on Fox. But right now, Discover Card is a proud contributor to the Make-A-Wish Foundation. And tonight, we'll make a donation of $500 to its local chapter. And Sadowski's the new hurler. Ace. Six foot four, 200 pound right hander. Two and two with a 3.8 earned run average. Been in 41 ball games for the Buckos. Pretty good strikeout numbers. A lot of walks, however. 31 in 47 innings. Oh. He's a product of the Detroit organization. Came over in a deal for Dan Maselli in November of last year. Silva did a nice job, didn't he? Did a great job. Two scoreless innings, and then they had that opportunity to get back in the ball game. Shane pitched his way out of it. Fly ball out into left center off the bat of Hidalgo, and it's his first big league dinger. He just keeps giving you reasons to like him, and you can see it coming. He's just been having so many good at bats. Getting the fat part of the so many times. Great swing. What a thrill. Hit a home run in the pennant race. <laughs> He's fired up. He ought to be. Watch this. Whoa. Fastball in the wheelhouse and he unloads. It's a, a long swing, but it's not a slow swing. If that makes any sense. Tapper third off the bat of Goody. Throw to first. And the out is made. The Astros with a couple of home runs tonight. Six to nothing. As Gutierrez now one for three on.
on his night's work. Asmus will be the bat. Gonzo homered in the second leading off. Hidago homers leading off in the sixth. Come on now. Somebody's got to go get that ball for him. I think they did because they threw it back down onto the field. And our whole bench was out there motioning, get us the ball. Osmus has flied out and looked at strike three call. Well, this guy got a buggy whip, had not he? He's a long armor, kind of slings it up there. Pitched a little bit in Detroit last year, seven games. And a little bit in 95. Started after it, laid off. Three balls, no strikes to Osma. Shane Reynolds due up next. Like so many of these guys, only had 66 days of big league experience coming into this season. A ball to walk in. Third walk to the Astros in the game. Now catcher Kendall and first baseman Young gonna talk to the youngster here. Reynolds had a sacrifice in the fourth will be called upon again. As important it was for Gene Lamont to win both of these games, he has to be thinking a little bit about tomorrow, so he has to be careful not to burn too many of his relievers in this game. Although in September he has a lot of arms available. Still want to have some seasoned, fresh arms ready for tomorrow. We're going to bunt laid off of it. Young stealing a page out of the Bagwell book, isn't he? Charging up at first. Bagwell kind of changed the style of first baseman around the league. So aggressive on bunts. Back in the third inning, Lloyds of London called Atlanta. To give Maddox a nine to two lead. Oh, was that Maddox? I thought that the Braves put up a nine spot in the first. Runner going, and it'll be not in time. Had to come in front of the bag to get it. Stolen base for Asmus. So now, now, now take another look at this. Watch Shane bother the catcher a little bit. And that's the Allen Ashby drill. The ball in front of the bag, so Osmus in there. He had a long session with that about a month ago. Ashby says, I want you to make the catches around the league feel the way they made me feel when they used to try that bunt. Here's a bouncer, shortstop, look to third, no play. Oh, Osmus got away with one, didn't he? A risky play to try to go to third base with the ball in front of you. He obviously felt like he had a good enough jump. Astros getting a stolen base in the inning. We haven't done any running to speak of against the Pirates. Last year we had 20. Now here's Osmus coming over. Cubby said stay up. Last year we ran wild against this club. Good shot of Joe Randa there pointing to the young shortstop to make the play at first base because that's not such a disadvantage for the defense. Osmus getting there with two outs. If there were nobody out, nobody out, Randa may have called for the ball at third base. Here's Biggio now. He's over one, hit by a pitch and scored. Also drawn a walk. But with the 20 steals last year against this club, we've only got six counting the one tonight. We we really haven't been as aggressive. And and, but, and I'm not saying that we have to run against everybody, but we've been running pretty good. 159 is second best in the league. It depends on the, on the nature of the games you're playing. Breaking ball down, 2-0 to Biggio. A couple of those games right after the break, we blew them out. You shut down the running game when you're hitting the ball all over the place and scoring a lot of runs, and then Cordova comes and they throw the no-hitter at us, so there's probably very few opportunities to run in that game. Osmus third, two down, 2-0 to Biggio. And right down Forbes for a strike, and it's 2-1. Craig Biggio, when he's ahead in the count, 400 hitter. Behind 267. Well, the 400 
needs a look right here because it's two and one. Ball three, strike one. That's because he has such a good eye. Well, because, because once he's once he's ahead in the count, he can eyeball that pitch, and now the count becomes even more in his favor. Three and one, three ten hitter here at Pittsburgh, and he's right now he's about a seven ten hitter. With all these things that work. He draws another walk. Runners on the corners, and it'll bring up Derek Bell. Two walks in the inning. Four in the game for the Astros. Two against Sadowski. Do you have a feeling you ought to be shutting up your phone? Well, I'm getting called. They're trying to pin me down. Who I think the MVP. I get to the ballpark. Here they are again. Well, we probably I'm have mo we probably have more bona fide candidates. Really, guys with a shot. That I can remember in a while. Well, there's so many variables that work this year. Walker has the great numbers, but he plays at Coors Field. He's on a club that's not in contention. Strike to Bell. Bell is one for three. Had a hit in the third and scored run number three. And he scored that third run with a real heads up piece of base running on a wild pitch that really didn't get that far away. It's a fun year to debate the MVP in this league because you can make arguments pro and con for all the. Contenders Bidge and Bagwell Piazza ready for an 0 1. Biggio running the throw, the Bino throw. Stolen base for Biggio, two stolen bases in the inning. 41 for Biggio. And it's funny, the two best clubs in the league, probably Atlanta and Florida, there's nobody off either of those clubs. That's being mentioned in the MVP race. A ball and a strike. Chance for Bell now to really loosen this baby up. Boy had a good eye to lay off that sharp breaker, didn't he? That's a tantalizing pitch. Tough on a righty with that arm angle he's got. I've known three pr pretty good hitters in my life. Me. That's right. No, I'm talking about Ted Williams, Stan Musial, and Henry Aaron. Yeah, they were pretty good. They said that the overabundance of guys throwing that pitch, that is down a ball, was the toughest pitch, and it made them tougher on those three guys than anything else. Williams said, and he was supposed to have the greatest eyes in the world. Musial's eyes weren't too bad either. Obviously, Aaron's weren't. Two runners scoring position. 3 1. Oh boy, he busted another one off on him. And it's 3 and 2 to Derek Bell. Bagwell is on deck. Derek talked himself into that one. He had a 3 and 1 count. He knows Bagwell's on deck. He said, I'm going to get a cherry here, I'm going to be aggressive. He chased a bad ball. See what he does with a payoff here. Strike call. After getting in some trouble, Sadowski pitched. Really threw some good pitches to Bell. So, leadoff homer Hidalgo. That's what the Astros get. Middle of the sixth inning on Fox from Three Rivers, six to nothing, Houston. And Kevin, here's your night to get in on the atmosphere. All right, thank you. Telecast is presented by the authority of the Houston Astros and may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form without the express written consent of the Houston Astros. Each and every one of them, you have to get all those guys to sign up. Yeah. Hello, you little fan. Let's see a lot of you <laughs> folks like that next week when we get to the dome. <laughs> Kevin Ward is singled and bounced to Biggio. Shane Reynolds with a three hit shot out through five. Turner Ward, switch hitter, got his single in the first inning. 
grounded out to Biggio in the third. Well, this guy's so intense. Showed bunt, but came up empty. You keep looking at the end of the bat down by his hands, thinking sawdust is going to be coming out of the end. Huh? He's squeezing that bat handle. One to Ward, Martin on deck, then Young. Backs him off. One and one. The Astros have out hit him eight to three. Lead in the score, six to nothing. The game has not been marred by an error on either side. A ball and two strikes. In and out goes Shane Reynolds. It's been his pattern, hasn't it? Moves his feet to the inside heater, then comes back over the outside corner. He works it that way. He works it back and forth. Heater, fork ball. Now oh, back yeah. <laughs> Good night, Irene. And now it's Ward's turn to be. is making the point that that's just the way I've been all night. That's my strike zone. Nice job by Austin is framing that, keeping very still, letting that pitch come to him. Sometimes if you jab for the ball, you won't get the call. What a great pitch, though. Here's Martin. He's bounced out to second and lined out to Bagwell. One out in the Pirate six. Oh, there's Bagwell again. Martin's got to be saying, I think I'll try somebody else. <laughs> He's been there for about 200 years, or however long we've been playing this game. That might be an exaggeration. About 100. Whatever you say. He's always been a first baseman over there. <laughs> that's a typical, that's a dugout remark. Guy comes back shaking his head. Killed that ball. Well, he's been there for 100 years. He's somewhere <laughs> else. Here's Young, fly to right, bounced out. Got to come hard with a shortstop, throw on a run, and a one, two, three inning. So that is nine. That's 11 ground ball outs for Shane. So that helps keep them in the park. Well, Ace keeps going up here now. Milo Hamilton with Jim Deshay is on Fox, and Bill Brown's coming along the rest of the way. Shane Reynolds talking to his catcher, and he's leading six to nothing. Top of the seventh, Astros six, Pirates no score. Here is tonight's Discover card, payback, playback. Richard Hildalgo. Hidalgo. It's been coming. Swinging the bat so well, and he unloads on this fastball. Got out of here in a hurry. You can get used to seeing that. Chris Peters now out of the Pirate bullpen, the left-hander to work to Jeff Bagwell. And here for the call is Bill Brown. Thanks, Jim. That was fun to watch. And interesting that it came off the bat of Richard Hidalgo in the city where Roberto Clemente was such a top-notch performer. Some think that Hidalgo might remind a few folks of Clemente, but it's, a, of course, a difficult comparison to make so early in his career, and that puts a lot of pressure on a young guy, doesn't it? He does have those type of raw skills, though. Big curveball for Peters. That's a staple for him, and it's one ball and two strikes to Bagwell. Bagwell has an RBI single and a walk tonight. He was caught looking in the fifth. 27,422 tickets sold for this one. Well, to center. Ward still going. Ward at the wall. Bagwell hits it way up off the tarp in center field. 41 home runs this year for Jeff Bagwell. His second RBI of the night. 126 for the year. And the Killer Bees are busting loose. That was a bomb. Oh. And here they threw it back in. It's going to roll all the way to, to the pitcher's mound. Hard to tell sometimes with the trajectory because this ball was hit so high. Look at that swing. Mm. 
Not many guys are strong enough to hit it that high and still get it out of here in center field. Turner Ward keeps hoping. <laughs> he makes the leap, but he comes up about 20 feet short. He crushed it. Luis Gonzalez hit the first home run of the night. Now he drives another one. Deep center field. And he hits this one off the base of the wall. It caroms by Ward. Gonzalez is going for third. Jose Guillen with a strong throw cut off. And now a triple by Gonzalez after a home run earlier. The extra base bats are swinging a potent tune tonight. And there's Gonzalez and Mike Kovic. No, it's often debated in clubhouses, airplanes, and team buses as to whether the ball flies better on a human night or on a clear night. I, I guess a non-human night. Mm -hmm. And this is a very sticky, humid night, and the ball really seems to be carrying. It carries better in humidity. Is that correct? Humidity. Yes. Is that a Bill Nye, the science guy? Yeah, that's right. Fact. It's a Bill Brown, the science guy fact. It is a fact. We just saw it in evidence. He also saw a pretty powerful swing from Gonzo. The infield is in for Bill Spires. He's two for three with an RBI. And he was hit by the pitch. He just, no, he wasn't. He thought he was. He started to go to first. Bill Hahn said no. Oh, well. Bill Spires will probably get an extra base hit. One and oh, the count. Let's see. Punches that had to hit him. Spires wouldn't have reacted that way, but Han, if he didn't see it, he's not going to call it. Looks like it maybe caught his sleeve a little bit. Oh, yeah. <laughs> no, wait a minute. Right, one on one. It's not like he was showing you up. He thought <laughs> he got hit by the pitch. Well, in fact, it might have hit the sleeve. And does that count? Is that part of the uniform? It should count, shouldn't it? Yeah, I've never seen it called otherwise. I've never seen, but you know, it hit your shirt. Stay here and hit. Foul ball, and that one almost got him rough at bat. He really is. One and two to Bill Spires. Clint Sadowski worked one inning, giving up one hit, one run, walking two, fanning one. Chris Peters is the fourth man to work tonight for Gene Lamont. Building this pitching staff. Quite a task this year for Pete Bukovic. With a lot of young arms. Spires rips one up the middle, base hit. Gonzalez will score. Two runs home in the inning. The Astros lead it eight to nothing. And Bill Spires has three hits tonight. He's driven in two to give him 42. He got his revenge. He wasn't hit by the pitch, but an RBI is even better. Certainly a better result for Billy Spires after a tough at bat, a tough called strike, and then he almost got hit in the fingers, delivered the base hit up the middle. Astros really working over the Pirate bullpen. That's 11 hits, an 8 to nothing lead. Richard Hidalgo has two of those hits, a double and a homer. In the dirt, there's ball one. I'm trying, trying to work on this theory, Jim, All right. of why the Astros have had so many blowout wins and so few close wins. All right, they are... Under 500 in games decided by one and two runs. They're 36 and 45. And yet they have outscored their opponents now by more than 100 runs this year. Dribbler third base side, Hidalgo will make it without a throw. That's his third hit. Double, a homer, and now an infield hit. Hidalgo had three hits yesterday. We're really seeing everything that Richard Hidalgo brings to the ball club. Infield in with his legs. We've seen him play the outfield very well. Strong throwing arm. Some power. This guy is going to be fun to watch. The thing that you, I really like about him from what I've heard from, from other players and people at the club, he said he's just an absolute sponge. Always asking veteran players and coaches about the game, what to do in certain situations. Maybe getting a little bit of it right now from J.L. Cruz. Well, remember the off day on the road on the last trip, and everybody headed for the golf course mm -hmm. in Denver. Uh, right, in Denver. And uh, we're talking with Richard Hidalgo. said, what are you going to do? He said, well, I'm going to meet with the coaches and talk about the Rockies players. That's on an off that's, day. Yeah, that's remarkable. <laughs> he wasn't kidding. <laughs> 
Well, here's the theory, Jim. Okay. That the Astros have a little bit better depth in their bullpen than a lot of the clubs they're playing because here they are just hammering away. Silva did well for two innings, but Sadowski gave up a homer. Now they're jumping on Peters, and uh, they have been able to break games open against a lot of the other clubs. Uh, guys in the bullpen who don't pitch when they have a lead and yet the Astros relievers can keep it close when they're behind. That work for you? Good theory. May not work. But a, a slight twist. All right. I think it may be because of the Astros starting pitchers carrying the game that much longer. Right. That's a, a so, big part of it so, too. You know, middle relief all over baseball is is down apparently so we're told. Yeah, you're right. That's, that's a very good part of that theory. Like the, tonight, Jason Schmidt, after three innings, he's gone. Now you expose some guys with good arms, but they're very young and inexperienced, and they're getting roughed up a little bit. Two balls and no strikes to Ricky Gutierrez. He's one for three. Two and one to Ricky. Brad Osmus on deck. The Astros have unloaded 12 hits in this game. They got 16 hits yesterday and 15 runs. in the dirt for ball three three and one the count Astros trying to make it a four and a half game lead over the Bucks. We've got our magic number cards we brought with us too. we've got on display up here in the booth all right you've got the nine sitting right in front of you now but you don't need an eight do you No, I wasted all my time making an eight and if we win this game we're gonna go right to seven yeah three and two because this is a double digit magic number game since the Astros are, are playing the team right behind them that's right uh, they can uh, if they win they lower that magic number automatically there it is nine number nine this is, took a lot of time to do it so you eight we can disregard we're gonna right by that into seven now should we win this ball game okay there you go well, we're not going to jump to any conclusions we're going to keep it at nine and this is a very pristine number because it's not sponsored by anybody right now we're working on that though for the future ground ball and Joe Randa throws to second Gets the force out there. Now they're going for a double play on Bill Spires. Tony Womack flips to the pitcher for the tag. Well, not the pitcher. Bill Spires is home and the Astros get a run. No, they don't. Bill Spires is out and they don't get a run. <laughs> it's one of those weird yeah. plays. Runners on first and second, you're just anticipating an around the horn double play. But this turns into a fielder's choice double play <laughs> because instead of turning and going to first, Womack goes back to third, and it's a pretty wise play because he's able to nail Spires, who would have been in scoring position. 5 4, 5 4, 6 on the rundown in case you're keeping a scorecard, and it is 8 to nothing. Brad Osmus takes ball one. Why were they high fiving Bill Spires in the dugout then? <laughs> Probably because of his, his RBI single. <laughs> that was it. There's a strike and it's one and one. Maybe for being involved in the only 5 4 5 4 6 double play of the year. <laughs> that was an unusual double play. And the Pirates have 145 of those. Still 8 to nothing, Houston. And Osmus checks his swing and fouls it. It is one and one. Jane Reynolds on deck. The Astros have hit three homers tonight. Really sending a message to the Bucks. Talking about these uh, double magic number games. Kind of plays with your mind a little bit, doesn't it? Yeah, the Astros could put a, a real big dent in this countdown if they win tomorrow as well. Down to five makes that weekend in Cincinnati very interesting. Yes, it does. Line drive hit. Osmus with the gapper. Picked up deep in center field by Turner Ward, and he holds him to a single. Looked like it might go all the way to the wall, but Ward cut it off, and that's the fifth hit of the inning. Gutierrez to third in this 8 to nothing ball game. Shane Reynolds will bat, and he'll be the seventh man to bat in the inning. Probably academic at this point in an eight to nothing game, but that heads up play by Womack on the fourth play, the five four five four six, ends up saving the Pirates a run here. 
Ford cuts the ball off, holds Brad to a single, first and third for Shane. Shane is 0 for 2 with a sack bunt. 8 to nothing, Houston. That's strike one to him. But his pitching has been impeccable tonight. He's allowed three hits and one walk through six innings. point on Jim we could probably say that we'll find out a lot about the Houston players and players might be finding out a lot about themselves if they go into postseason play see how they handle pressure situations like that certainly they've had many big ball games over the years that they have been in the major leagues but nothing like a postseason game that counts this this series here is a good test to get a taste of it but uh, performance of Shane Reynolds' his last couple of times out that whoever plays the Braves is going to be a decided underdog. But with the Astros starting pitching, they're going to have a fighting chance. Nunez gets the force on Osmonds, and the Astros come up with two runs in the seventh inning on five hits. They leave two. They're in front eight to nothing. Moving out of the bottom of the seventh inning, Shane will go against Randa Kendall and Guillen. And it's been a shutout situation several times when these clubs have met this year. Astros, right after the All-Star break, came out fired up. They shut out the Pirates in back-to-back -back games here. Seven to nothing, Daryl Kyle. And 10 to nothing, Mike Hampton. Back-to-back -back complete games here. And the Pirates have shut out Houston in Houston. Six to nothing. And then here, Three to nothing on that no-hitter in ten innings. So each club has had two shutouts against the other. There's a possibility of another one so far tonight. Joe Randa's 0 for 2. There's tomorrow night's starter, Cordova. Swing and a miss, strike one. Shane's been in front of most of the hitters. Early in the game, he was jumping out in front with the fastball. Here he starts Randa with the forkball. Third time through the lineup gives him a little bit different look. Randa was sitting on a heater, was fooled. 17 of 23 batters have gotten strike one from Shane. There's one to left center, bouncing and staying in play. Randa to second base with a double. It's his 24th two bagger of the year for Joe Randa. A big lead. Oftentimes you throw the ball more towards the center of the plate. You know, for some guys, that's a wise way to pitch. Shane is so good, though, so good to corners. I don't know that he should change his pattern just because he has a big lead. He doesn't walk anybody anyway. Jason Kendall grounded out and walked. Uncharacteristically, Shane walked him on four pitches leading off the fifth inning. And then one out later, Nunez doubled, but Shane struck out Williams, the pinch hitter, and got Womack on a grounder. Ball one to Kendall. Pirates have caused some of the other owners around Major League Baseball to do a lot of thinking with what they've accomplished this year with a $9 million payroll. Rounded foul, one and one. Now, whoever comes out of this division into the playoffs is going to be the only club in the playoffs with a payroll below $50 million. Created some excitement for a time. They've dropped back. Generally, it's thought that a team can compete pretty well with a relatively low payroll, but can't win. Fly ball, right field, bell in. One out. And of course, it depends on what division you're playing in. Maybe that's what we had to do with realignment. 
instead of geographically based on payroll. That could be done. The high payroll division, <laughs> and the middle payroll division, and the low payroll division. Of course, that would change from year to year, but <laughs> yeah, you'd have to set your payroll and apply. Gene Lamont realizes that uh, his club has a lot of work to do from this point on, but this is a tremendous starting point for Gene this season. The Pirates have already won as many games as they did all of last year. Jose Guillen's 0 for 2, and they rush players like Guillen. He chops one to short. Gutierrez lays back down. Sends him out. Good play. Two out. It's ironic that uh, one of the guys they brought in to stabilize after a tremendous year last year, Kevin Elster, really hasn't been able to contribute very much because of an injury all year. One veteran that they were going to pay a few dollars to ends up on the shelf. Nunez is next. Nunez is one for two. He had a ground ball double just inside the third base bag in the fifth inning. Pirates could be hit hard, though, when the expansion draft rolls around because of all the young talent. Line drive to right. Bell over for the third out. No runs. The leadoff double didn't blossom for the Pirates. And after seven, it's eight to nothing Houston. Houston Astros baseball on Fox Sports Southwest is being brought to you by Bill Hurd Chevrolet and by Snapper and your local Snapper dealer. Snapper, anything less just won't cut it. Here at Three River Stadium in Pittsburgh, the Astros have built an eight to nothing lead. They've out hit the Bucks 13 to four with no errors in the game. Pitcher number five will be in the game now for the eighth inning for the Pirates. Right-hander Elmer descends and there's a new right fielder as well. Mark Smith in right field. He's batting ninth. Descends goes into the number seven spot of Jose Guillen. It's eight to nothing. The Astros have Craig Biggio batting. Biggio has been on three times with two walks and he was hit by a pitch. He scored a run and he has stolen a base. He takes strike one. One ball, one strike. Chris Peters in one inning allowed five hits, two runs, with no walks and no strikeouts. Homer descends was recalled from the Mexico City Red Devils on the 5th of September. He was 16 and 5 with Mexico City with a 3.56 ERA. The shot goes down to Kevin Young. One out. Pirates have a working agreement with that Mexico City club. Sends made his only appearance uh, with the Bucks prior to tonight. Last Wednesday night in Montreal, just two thirds of an inning, didn't give up a run. Twenty-five years old. He's from Hermosillo, Mexico. Yeah. It's some time with the Pirates last year. Fifteen games. Eric Bell faces him. He's one for four. Atlanta beat the Mets ten to two. Braves closing in on another title. There's strike one. Nineteen for Greg Maddox. Errol Kyle will try to match that tomorrow night. Against Francisco Cordova. Marlins split their double header, losing five to two to the Phillies and winning five to two. One ball, one strike, but the Marlins have their eyes on that wild card spot. All important game later tonight in San Francisco with the Dodgers and Giants. One and two. So teams are narrowing in on these playoff berths, Jim. Hey, they're expecting 62,000 in San Francisco for that ball game tonight. That is a monstrous throng. Wow. What an atmosphere that'll be. Whoa. And those giant fans love to razz the Dodgers. Two and two. That is a highly competitive division. The Rockies love to beat the Dodgers. The Padres love to beat the Dodgers. The Giants love to beat the Dodgers. Dodgers love to beat everybody. <laughs> everybody wants a shot at the Dodgers. <laughs> right call. Bell is caught looking. Two outs. And Jeff Bagwell bats. Bagwell has a homer, an RBI single, and a walk. The 
Daryl Kyle will be the man tomorrow night going for win number 19. He's lost only six. Leads the league in innings pitched. Has a shot at the Cy Young Award. Has a shot at winning 20. We've seen Lamont sitting over in the Pirate dugout thinking, man, we got to just earn a split of this series. we got to beat Daryl Kyle. I'm sure he was hoping they could win this game and have a little emotion, a little momentum going into that game. Yeah. He does have his best going for Dover. Two and two. The Pirates can draw on what they did in July right after the All-Star break. And the Astros steamrolled them the first two games, and then the Pirates snap back to win the next two. But trading victories is not going to work for Pittsburgh anymore. They're going to have to have a major run after tonight, it appears. Two and one. It, it can be done, and it certainly has been done. But the Astros would be, if they win this game, four and a half ahead with 11 to play. And it's five in the loss column. Right. Pirates have an off day next week. Well, takes it's two and two. In 1964, the Phillies led the Cardinals by six and a half with 12 to play, and they blew it. They lost 10 in a row. Bagwell rocks one to right center field. This one will bounce high off the wall. He'll have another extra base hit. His third hit of the night. This one's a double, his 36th of the year. Fourth time Bagwell has been on base. He loves to hit in Pittsburgh. We had a base hit to left, a home run to dead center, and now a double to right center. And when that's happening, Bagwell's locked in. Just drives this breaking ball off the wall on one hop. Bagwell's hit better than 350 in his career in Pittsburgh with nine homers. Now it's Luis Gonzalez back. He's had two extra base hits tonight. That's strike one to Gonzo. Brownie, do you know the uh, records or, or roughly what the records were of those two clubs that year, Philly and St. Louis in 64? Nope. I'm curious to see if they were way above 500. Yeah, we'll have to check on that. Dallas fouls it back. Oh, and two. That was a year some fans who were out there tonight probably weren't following baseball too closely, may not have read about it. Gene Walk was the manager of the Phillies, and he was basically working at times with a two man starting rotation. Jim Bunning and Chris Short, and he admitted after it was all over that he burned out his starting pitcher. Fly ball left field. Now Martin is back. Still going back for the catch to end the Astros eight. No runs a hit. A man left in the middle of the eighth. It is eight to nothing Astros. Don't go away because coming up tonight on Fox Sports News, McGuire. The chase is on. No wiggle room for the worm. Brunel snaps back. The fishing story. Yeah, must be. That one's intriguing. Mark Smith will lead it off now in the bottom of the eighth inning. It is eight to nothing. The Astros lead the Pirates. They've out hit the Bucks, 14 to four. Smith hit the big three-run pinch hit homer to win that no hitter here in the tenth inning earlier this year. It is eight to nothing. Astros as Smith bats this time. He has nine homers, 29 RBI, taking strike one there, hitting 288 for the season. Another very pleasant surprise for this Pittsburgh club. Mark has had 163 at bat. He has a 534 slugging percentage. Star at Southern Cal. One ball, one strike to the former Baltimore Oriole. And Smith, as a pinch hitter, has two long balls, five runs batted in, five for 15. Not pinch hitting here. He was already in the game. One and two the count to Mark. Had 163 at bats, nine home runs. So if you projected that as an everyday player, he'd hit you 25 to 30 home runs. And against the Astros, he has that homer to win the game. And four RBI. This one is foul. Jack Lind had to skip rope there at third base. Still a ball and two strikes. Smith 
has hit 320 with men in scoring position. That time he backed up his third base coach even more. He hit a pinch homer last night and it went 464 feet. Has three game winning home runs this year. And he started the year at Calgary, didn't join the Pirates until late May. Two balls and two strikes. He was hitting 372 at Calgary. 14 homers and 42 runs batted in there. And the 14 home runs came in a span of only 30 games. These guys had some big, powerful hits this year. Not here. Shane strikes him out. Number five of the night. He's going for a shutout. And that is nothing new when he pitches against the Pirates. Second fork ball away, just way out in front of it, looking for the fastball. All quiet in the Astro bullpen. It looks like Larry Durker is going to give Shane a shot at the shutout here tonight. Tony Womack's the batter. He is 0 for 3. Shane has two shutouts against the Pirates in his career. First two major league shutouts. One came in 94 at Houston, the other in 95 at Houston. And in another game here at Pittsburgh, early in his career, 94, he came in with a big lead in the third inning. Doug Drabeck had to leave with an injury. And he pitched seven shutout innings to combine with Drabeck on that shutout. So three different times he has started and pitched scoreless ball for at least seven against the Bucks. 2 and 0. Oh. Still strong, fastball being clocked at 88, 89 miles an hour. He's trying to make this his sixth consecutive win against the Pirates. Strike makes it two and one. He lost his first decision against them in 94. That was in relief. ball back two and two it's odd the way the schedule worked out Jim a lot of people who were looking at this division over the winter might have looked at the schedule and said oh the Astros and Cardinals don't even play <laughs> the last two months that won't be any good You're right there Pirates fooled everybody <laughs> they really did Shane takes it on two hops two outs but that's really the reason the owners want to go back to that unbalanced schedule in the future because it has not worked out this way often enough the last few years that the first and second place teams in a division have played each other at the end. It's funny when this realignment debate is talked about and hashed there's so many individual interests for each club. Apparently the Rangers have a deal with Major League Baseball that says if they're in the American League West, this is what I've been led to believe anyway, they do not have to play an unbalanced schedule. They don't want to be overloaded with games on the West Coast. What a so weird how, deal. How do you remedy that situation? <laughs> That's a toughie. All one to Turner Ward. He's one for three. All kinds of side agreements and promises to expansion teams that only last for two years and things that have to be dealt with. And they get together and they are together in Atlanta. Line drive, center field, base hit. Turner Ward is two for four tonight. Pirates fans have been pretty quiet. They were thunderous at the beginning of this game. But beginning with the Luis Gonzalez second inning homer, they got quiet. Astros took charge early and Shane Randall shut the Pirates down. It's so important in games like these to keep playing add on. Two out single, Al Martin now he is 0 for 3. Twice though, he's picked on Jeff Bagwell with line drives. Bagwell has robbed him once. The other time the ball was right at him. Cardinals can still be a factor though. And the Reds can in this race. They could still overtake the Pirates. There's strike one. You might uh, figure that the Cardinals would have a tough time really being interested in doing that. But we'll see. They have Mark McGuire and he is a hot hitter right now. I'll tell you one thing, the balance of power for next season has just shifted in the National League Central. Yes, it has. Well, that's foul ball. I'll stayed on the ledge up there, and all the four fans down below are just heartbroken. Well, we'll have to climb out there after the game's over. Well, they won't be heartbroken, but we'll be leg broken. 
couple of balls and two strikes. Here, I chose a cap round. You can go hand over hand down there. Well, if you can lower me down, maybe we'll, we'll do that. Barry Bonds has hit an upper deck home run for the Giants in the bottom of the first to give them a two to nothing lead over the Dodgers. And don't you know, Mr. Bonds is loving that. Did you want to be in a Dodger uniform sitting in that bullpen at oh. Recom Park? Oh, that is a rough play, isn't it? That could be brutal. One and two. Those fans can be difficult to live with if you're in a gray uniform, especially of the team down south a few hundred miles. The Giants sweep that series. It'll be very interesting the next week and a half. There's a high drive right center field for Al Martin. He puts a deep charge into it. Two run homer. His 12th of the year, giving him 55 runs batted in, following a shutout bid for Shane, making it 8 to 2. Al Martin goes deep here in the eighth, and the Pirates score for the first time. Trying to get the ball in on him. It just came back a little bit. Martin drove it out of here. Kevin Young's the batter. Two outs. He pops it up. Biggio settling into the shallow center. Back pedaling. We're out number three. Two runs, two hits for the Pirates. The ninth inning is up in just a moment with the Astros in front by six, eight to two. Top half the ninth, Astros eight, Pirates two. Friday, September 26th. It's the last Coke Friday night at the Dome when the Astros play the Pirates at 7.05. Get a $3 upper reserve ticket with an empty 20-ounce Coke bottle at the Dome box office. You'll also get a coupon good for the purchase of one 20-ounce Coke, a Diet Coke, or a Sprite for just $1 with the purchase of a jumbo hot dog at the game. Bill Spires is the batter now as the ninth inning gets underway. The Pirates have made a couple of changes on their infield. Shortstop Nunez has moved to second base. New shortstop is Lou Collier. Fires with strike one. Bill has three hits tonight and two runs batted in. Elmer Descends is in his second inning of work. Well, you did mention that earlier, Brownie. This is really a blue collar kind of town. <laughs> no, that was blue collar. Oh. <laughs> Could be a time, maybe. Little roller to Kevin Young. And he tosses <laughs> Descends for out number one. Richard Hidalgo is next. You know, he's had such a good night. He might even, he might, we're not committing on this. He could be our player of the game. Maybe if he gets another hit here. He could qualify. He's one of those under consideration. Which would uh, give him a big jump on player of the road trip. Oh, yeah. A lot of candidates in the early going. Well, you've got six games on this road trip, so you don't have to settle in yet on that. But Hidalgo has a very good start. A double, a homer, and an infield hit. There's ball one to Hidalgo. And Hidalgo, in addition to this uh, glittering night with a bat, does a lot of things that don't make it into the box score, too. Ground ball cut off by Descend. Two outs. He plays the position with fundamental soundness in center field. So if you come out to the Astrodome, and hopefully you will for several games on the final homestand of the year, you'll enjoy watching Richard Hidalgo. You could be watching him for many years. Ricky Gutierrez is one for four. Got a base hit in the fourth inning. Good night all around for the Astros with 14 hits. Gutierrez takes strike one. They have been sprinkled throughout the order. Biggio and Shane Reynolds are the only two in the starting lineup without a hit. One and one. Biggio doesn't have to get a hit to have an influence on the game. He's been on three times. Barring a miraculous comeback in the ninth by the Pirates, it really is mission accomplished already here in Pittsburgh by winning this game. Joe Randa, bare hands, fires, a stretch by Young, safe at first. 
Pirates did everything they could humanly do, and Gutierrez gets another hit. He's two for five. Swinging bunt right out in front of the plate. Randa charges it nicely, goes with the bare hand, <laughs> picks it clean. Great throw, great stretch, and good hustle by Ricky. Ricky's on an eight-game hitting streak now. And this is his second hit of the night. That was a close call for Ed Rapuano. Brad Osmus has a walk and a single tonight. Foul ball, strike one to Brad. Shane Reynolds is on deck. But the Astros have some warm-up action going in the bullpen. An eight to two lead for Houston. Magic number on its way down to seven. It appears. One ball and one strike. Pirates have such a long tradition and they're hoping to get back to what they've done so many times going to postseason play. These things take time and they have a very young club. Strike call one and two. We started to mention last inning and the inning ended, Jim, that the they could really be pillaged in the upcoming expansion draft because they can't protect all the young talent they have. All the talent that they have will be very affordable for an expansion team. There's going to be some guys left unprotected around baseball with big dollar dollar signs on the contract, and those expansion clubs aren't going to pick them. Right. Osmus caught looking. No runs a hit for the Astros. We move to the bottom of the ninth. Eight to two Astros. Southwest, brought to you by Southwest Airlines, Discover Card, Southwestern Bell, and Gatorade. The Astros lead at eight to two, getting ready now for the bottom of the ninth inning, and we've mulled this over. Our Southwestern Bell player of the game is indeed Richard Hidalgo. Three for five, a homer, a double, a single. Even though he didn't get a hit in the ninth inning, he's deserving as are many other players of our Southwestern Bell player of the game. Everybody chimed in tonight. And Shane Reynolds, of course, was under strong consideration. He had a <laughs> shutout until the eighth inning with two outs. Joe Randa, line drive over Craig Biggio. Base hit as the last of the night gets underway. Randa's second hit of the night gives the Pirates some hope, but they trail by six. Astros have two pitchers working in the bullpen and smiling Joe Randa. They call him the Joker because he's got that permanent smile affixed to his face. Shane has thrown only 96 pitches. Pretty low pitch total for a ninth inning effort. And a great strike to ball ratio. Better than two to one. Last time out he beat the Dodgers to snap a four game losing streak. Hadn't gotten a lot of run support. Now he got a lot tonight early. And after a 10 to 3 win, now he could get an 8 to 2 win. Jason Kendall is 0 for 2 with a walk. Breaking ball, ball one. Even though Shane has not been pleased with the numbers this year, with the way things have gone, he was out for more than a month with knee surgery. And now he can make all that really academic by going into postseason with a good head of steam, Jim. You're absolutely right, Brown. If you think about it, the way he pitched prior to the knee injury, he was dominant. And then he had the knee injury, and he, he pitched with it. It was bothering him. He struggled. Had some time off. He's had to rebuild, come back around into this form, and that's all that matters now is what does he do from this point forward. One ball and two strikes. He had an ERA of 2.45 after his first eight starts. It was after that that the knee started to bother him in mid-May. In the dirt. Two balls and two strikes to Jason Kendall. One thing about these Pirates that you realize is going to happen. They are young. They're resilient. They're going to show up tomorrow night and be very interested in winning that game. Great experience for them this year. 
Not that they're finished with it. Fly ball center. Hidalgo all the way back to the wall, and he gets there early and makes the catch. Kendall unloads a long first out. Hidalgo did what you love to see in an outfielder. He got back early. He felt the wall. He didn't go jumping into it, crashing into it. Yeah, for a young player who hasn't been in this ballpark before, he tracked this ball very well. Was there in great shape. As, as we talked to guys from AAA who played with him all year, and he just has great instincts in the outfield. Dale Swain is the pinch hitter now. Flame is batting for Elmer Descend. They work two innings, give up two hits and no runs. No walks and two strikeouts. Swain, a switch hitter, hitting 260. 11 homers, 45 runs back in. High drive, right field. Swain hits a two run, 10th homer. Second two run homer in as many innings for the Bucks. Now it's eight to four with one out. their fourth pinch homer of the year. They are the battling Bucks. Uh, people who pay attention to the uh, sports news at night and the highlight shows, we've seen a lot of high-fiving in this ballpark late in ball games. Seem to have that magic working for him here at this park. That ball was crushed by Dale Swain. That'll be all for Shane Reynolds. Sometimes when you're pitching and you're going for a complete game, and you've been out there battling all night long, you want to get there in a hurry. Maybe you rush into a couple of mistakes. I don't know if that was the case with Shane tonight, but oftentimes that's what happens. Great he effort. Well, yes, it was with an 8-4 to four lead. Billy Wagner's coming in, and we'll be right back. Shane Reynolds leaves with an 8-4 to four lead. It was 8 to nothing. Al Martin hit a two-run homer in the eighth. Now Dale Swain will pinch a two-run homer in the ninth. So his ERA doesn't look nearly as good as it did just a few minutes ago. But the big ball game, he turns it over to Billy Wagner, and that might work actually down the road to the Astros' advantage, Jim. Yeah, the line score won't be as pretty for Shane, but the effort certainly was an outstanding job. And it gives Billy Wagner a chance to work here. He hasn't worked in a couple of days. Come in and get a couple outs. And, and beyond this mound, and that's oftentimes a comfort factor for a relief pitcher to be able to throw off the mound in case he's needed in a pressure situation tomorrow. 97 strikeouts, 62 innings. He's facing the switch hitting shortstop. Now second baseman, Abraham Nunez. He's retired 39 of 55 first batters. It is not a save situation for Billy with a four-run lead and two outs to go. His last outing brought a loss in the 10th inning to the Dodgers on Sunday, 4-3. to three. He walked two in that game. There's ball one to Nunez. Wagner didn't give up a hit in that ball game Sunday. Now he's 2-0. Oh. Wagner came in in the ninth inning against the Dodgers and had a 1-2-3. Then he walked two in the tenth and left. Three balls and no strikes. Remains of this crowd is not going to make it easy on lag. There's a lively bunch left here. Nunez walks. And what remains of this crowd is starting to get very enthusiastic with a possibility of what might happen. Burn Rule goes to the mound. It's a rowdy diehard element hanging in there. Save since late July. Not in a safe situation here, but the Astros really want him to get these final two outs. Facing a tough hitter in Mark Smith. Smith struck out in the eighth inning. That's ball one to Smith. Smith and Joe Randa hit home runs on consecutive pitches off Todd Worrell this year in the ninth inning. 
as the Pirates won a game four to three. Reich makes it one and one. Billy really needed that after five straight balls. Pirates have tagged a lot of top-notch closers with losses this year or blown saves. He's really late on that one. It's one and two. Among the list, Todd Worrell, Trevor Hoffman, Mel Rojas, Rob Nen, John Franco, Dennis Eckersley, Rod Beck, and Mark Wohler. All those guys have failed to get saves against the Pirates at some point this year. Pretty good lineup. Yes, it is. Has been the year of the blown save in many really has. Popped up. Bagwell. Two outs. Very big one for Billy Wagner. And Luke Collier is next. This will be Collier's first time up. Came in the game at shortstop. As Nunez slid over to second. Collier's had only 26 at bats this year with a 115 average, no homers, and two runs batted in. Collier was recalled on the second of the month, but didn't play his first game until last night after rejoining the club. That's strike one to Lou, who was with the Pirates earlier this year. He hit 330 at Calgary this season. 31 doubles, one homer, and 48 runs batted in. The appeal goes to first. There's a strike on an Ed Rapuano call from first base. No balls, two strikes to Lou Collier. Bagwell is not holding the runner, Nunez, with a four-run lead. Wing and a miss, and Wagner snuffs out the Pirates' fire here in the ninth inning. The Pirates get two runs on two hits. So in the eighth inning and in the ninth, they get a pair of two-run homers from Martin and Swain. But the Astros win this ball game now. Their magic number drops to seven. Their lead is back to four and a half games and a big night for them, Jim. A great effort all the way around. Plenty of offense. Super job by Shane Reynolds and Billy Wagner comes in. If you're scoring at home, that last fastball, 98 miles an hour. Our next Astros telecast comes your way Tuesday night. The Astros return home to host the Chicago Cubs. Stay tuned. Fox Sports News is next with coverage of today's sports and the latest scores and highlights. Again, the final tonight with the Astros 8 and the Pirates 4 from Pittsburgh. <laughs>